You heard the music, you know what time it is. I'm Carla Zeus, and get ready to cross the Atlantic because today's show starts in London, United Kingdom. This is not where you'll find the headquarters of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, but it is where you'll find its members meeting on the 70th anniversary of the alliance. NATO's been called the strongest military alliance in the world. Two of its 29 members are the United States and Canada, the other 27 are European countries, and NATO was created after World War II to help balance out the influence of the Soviet Union in Eastern Europe. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, NATO's focus has changed, and its members don't always see eye to eye on its future. In the past, as a U.S. presidential candidate, Donald Trump called NATO obsolete. And as president of the nation that contributes the most money to NATO, he's criticized many of its other members for not contributing the minimum amount under NATO's guidelines. But more recently, President Trump has said NATO serves a great purpose and that it's now getting stronger. Compare that to what French President Emmanuel Macron recently said about NATO, that the organization is experiencing brain death because there's not enough coordination between the U.S. and Europe regarding NATO. Some other leaders of NATO countries, including Canada and the Netherlands, publicly disagreed with that. And German Chancellor Angela Merkel said judgments like it aren't necessary, even if NATO's members have problems and need to pull together. They'll be discussing ways to do just that over their two-day summit in London. What is NATO? Why is it important? And what's its future? The North Atlantic Treaty Organization is a political and military alliance established in 1949 that seeks to promote stability in the North Atlantic area. It is the will of the people of the world for freedom and for peace. Led by Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, there are 29 member countries, and its HQ is in Brussels. NATO doesn't have its own troops, but relies on contributions of forces from its member countries. At NATO's core is Article 5, which states an attack on one member is an attack on all NATO allies. The collective defense principle was to protect Western European nations against the Soviet Union. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, NATO's new tasks ranged from being a bulwark against Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan to fighting human trafficking and intercepting refugees in the Mediterranean. NATO is still extremely active, with some 4,000 US troops in Poland and the Baltic states, and tens of thousands on 48-hour standby, bolstering NATO's allies and sending a clear message to Russia. Ten-second trivia. In area, which of these locations is largest? Great Barrier Reef, Lake Superior, New Zealand, or the Alps? an area of about 135,000 square miles, the Great Barrier Reef is the largest location on this list. A team of scientists says acoustic enrichment may be able to help revitalize dead coral, like what's found in some parts of the Great Barrier Reef. But what is acoustic enrichment? It's underwater loudspeakers, and the music they play includes the sounds of healthy reefs. One of the authors of a study recently published in Nature Communications says healthy coral reefs are noisy places. They include the grunts of fish and the snaps of shrimp. But dead coral reefs are apparently much quieter without the hustle and bustle of undersea life. So what scientists did was put speakers on dead coral patches of the Great Barrier Reef and play the sounds of healthy reefs. And they say that attracted fish about twice as many as areas of dead coral without the sounds. Researchers say the fish could help ecosystems recover and give the coral the chance of new life. The speakers aren't a proven solution, at least not at this point. Scientists can't say for sure if the fish that the noise has attracted actually stuck around. That could be key to a reef's recovery, and they're hoping to do more research on this. But they think that the loudspeakers could help. There are a number of threats to the health of coral reefs. They range from pollution and low tides to invasive species and changes in water temperature. Next on CNN 10, we're going back to the future. It's easy to understand why a futuristic home like the Futuro got a lot of attention in 1969. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had just walked on the moon. There was a lot of interest in what a space age home of the future might look like. The Futuro didn't really catch on, but a preservation architect in California hasn't only restored one, 
he's made it his vacation home high in the San Jacinto Mountains. I've always had an interest in space, starting as a small kid. I was fascinated with sci-fi stories, Buck Rogers, even the Flash Gordon series. Uh, not with too much in the alien area, but uh, certainly in the space travel and living on other planets. This is the 50th year anniversary of the Futural, the same time that man landed on the moon. That's one small step for man. America, and I think the rest of the world, was fascinated with low-cost housing that would provide for the masses, that would be prefabricated and uh, be able to be shipped around. It was also fascinated with the use of plastics. Plastics. Plastic provided that wonderful avenue that was low cost, no maintenance as it was being advertised, lightweight, structural strong, and easy to ship. What a dream. The history of the Futuro was a little bit short-lived, but it started with Matty Sirenen, who is a Finnish architect, being asked to design a mountain cabin. He then found that this was very popular, although not popular where the mountain cabin was in Finland. Uh, the people up there thought it was an embarrassment on the environment, this plastic spaceship. Although around the world, people really became interested in the Futuro and it took off in the United States. Currently, right now, it's estimated that about close to maybe 50 of these are in existence. Uh, there could be some more that haven't simply been found, but I doubt it. We think the livability of the Futuro is just incredible. We open the front door and there's not a speck of dust in here. That's because the windows are not operable and the door seals up pretty well, but it's wonderful. Being at 520 square feet, probably one of the forefronters of the whole tiny home movement, it was advertised for a family of four. But they're always designed to be sort of a mountain cabin, ski cabin, not so much as a permanent residence. Good evening. The Middle East War produced developments all over the world today. The oil-producing countries of the Arab world decided to use their oil as a political weapon. When the oil embargo hit, it had a major impact on the cost of crude oil in which plastics are made from. This became known as the Mercedes-Benz of prefabricated housing, and it pretty much then just curtailed the manufacturing of any more of the Futuros. They just ceased to exist. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Being that we're celebrating this 50th anniversary of both of these events, the Futuro being 50 years old and Armstrong stepping on the moon, you have to be a custodian of these resources. It just gives you a wonderful sense of place when you're here, that you're really in a special place that will never be created again. Godzilla has taken on his share of monsters since he made his film debut in 1954. King Kong, Destoroya, Mothra. Here we see him taking on Mother Nature and getting completely snowed under. In central New York, a resident, the human kind, took this time-lapse video as a recent storm blew over. And Godzilla is ultimately coated by what the resident says was a mixture of sleet, snow, and freezing rain. Total accumulation was reportedly more than 10 inches. A monstrous amount that mashed the plant eater, burying the lizard in a blizzard, the fury in a flurry, the villain in the chill end, the miscreation and accumulation of precipitation that shocked the nation and gave a new meaning to the term monster storm. I'm Carla Zeus and that eats up another edition of CNN.